<laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> We're not online yet. Hey, good morning. You already off church this morning? Hey, Amen. I'm coming to worship and praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stand and give the Lord an offering of praise and thanksgiving. Let's enter into his praise, into his presence this morning as we worship him. Father, thank you, Lord God, for your service. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come to worship you, to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise, God. We're so thankful this time to be in your presence and Lord God we lift up our voice to glorify you thanking you Lord for what you have done for us bless this service accomplish your will thank you Lord God for each and every one that is here in your house and for all that has joined us online and thank you Lord God for all that you will continue to do in our life as we worship and praise you in Jesus name we ask all these things amen amen let's sing that song leaning on the everlasting arms Page 298, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms.
first two. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. My
Amen. Praise the Lord. What a blessing it is to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and most of all, where we can feel the presence of God. Amen. Amen. And so may the Lord bless us with his presence this morning. May God show up and do something good in his house. Amen. Amen. As we believe him and trust him this morning, God will work miracles in our life. At this time, we want to thank you all for being here, each and every one of you in the house of the Lord, and you that are joining us in, online, we thank you for joining us, and you that will watch later, thank you. But this time we'll receive the Sunday morning tithe and offering, and we ask Jimmy, would you please help us this morning? Thank you, sir. Would you please pray? Thank you. Father, we ask you to bless this offering today, bless each one, for the Lord gives Christ name we pray. Amen. Thank you. How to make an executive decision. <laughs> make me feel good, right? <laughs> Thank you all for your giving this morning. You either watch or join us online, there's a link there if you like to support the work of God. Just go in there and click it and it will take you walk you through the whole thing. And you can be a blessing to the ministry here in Nashville, which we appreciate. God bless you. You all still excited to be in church this morning? You awake yet?
up and sing and worship the Lord. times where the problem comes, we try to take things in our own hands, <laughs> try to fight our own battles when God is able to fight it for us, amen? amen? Praise God. I'm glad you're here, glad you're doing well, excited, motivated, fit to fight, dynamite. Boy. <laughs> Didn't get no amen. I guess everybody's so tired this morning. <laughs> I'm just throwing out words, see what John will hit, you know? <laughs> maybe, maybe I should throw out words like tired and sleepy. And <laughs> I'm excited to be here anyways, it don't matter. I want to read to you this morning from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 9, verse 18 through 22. Matthew 9, 18 through 22. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him, and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And I want to use verse 21 as our text this morning. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. And with the help of the Lord this morning, I want to preach in a message entitled, A Heart Full of Faith. A Heart Full of Faith. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Marvin, would you please pray for the message and the messenger this morning? Father, thank you for our pastor. Father, thank you for each soul that is present. Father, mold us and shape us into what you want us become giving you the glory father bless the message and the messenger in Christ's name amen. amen thank you sir thank you all for being here thank you for your giving just thank you for being you how about that right we don't want you to be anybody else just be yourself god made you just the way you are one guy's in my work he, i hope he's not watching <laughs> but he had this little thing on his computer a little ribbon he said god made me special <laughs> <laughs> but the question could be asked this morning, and not in a, in a judgmental way, but what is your heart full of? What is your heart full of? Is there doubt? Is there fear? Or is there faith? Is there faith in your heart? And so I want to talk about a heart full of faith. And she was singing about David and how he went out there and he slayed the giant. 
And when you read the story, you, you kinda, it kind of gets you to think a little bit, you know, what motivated him, what made David you know, step out on the battlefield and just go out there and said, I will face this giant. When they were mighty warriors, Saul was a man of war, and the Bible said he was bigger than everybody. He was taller than everyone of Israel, head and shoulder above everyone. And then there were mighty men like Joab and different ones that were in the army, but none of them had the courage to step out and face Goliath, this mighty giant. But here, this shepherd boy who had never been in a battle in his whole life, just stepped out in a battlefield and said, I will face Goliath. I will do it. I will step out and I will fight for Israel. And, and to come back to this thing is there was something that David had. His heart was full of something that the other soldiers didn't have. And that was he had a heart that was full of faith. Amen. He had a heart that was full with faith that he could step out there and say, God, I will go out there and I will be a soldier for you. I will go out there and I will bring this giant down, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. God, I will step out on the battle field and I will destroy the enemy. It is because on the inside of David, there was something there. Amen. There was something that was, that his mind or his heart was full of. And that was faith. Thank God for faith this morning. If I want my heart to be full of something, let it be faith. Amen. Let my heart be filled with the faith of God or faith, believing and trusting in God, knowing that God will never let me fall. Amen. Thank God for faith this morning. We read the stories about, about Daniel and all these men and women of faith in the Old Testament and knowing that they were not born again like we are, knowing that they didn't have the Holy Ghost baptism like we have today. But yet, when you read about their life, when you read about their story, man, they did all kind of great and mighty things. Amen. They stopped the mouths of lions. They quenched the violence of fire. Moses parted the Red Sea. Manna came down from heaven. All these mighty things that were done by the them, Joshua and the walls of Jericho and all these stories that are given to us. How did they do it? Or how did they accomplish all these great things? It is because their heart, their heart was full of faith. They knew that God will supply their every need. They knew that God will stand with them. God will stand by them. God will give them what they need in their time of need. And so they just step out and did what God wanted them to do. And this morning, that's what I'm preaching about each and every one of us can have a heart that is full of faith. Amen. We don't have to let our heart be taken with doubt and discouragement and fear and worry. We can have faith in our God this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank God for faith. Come on, get, get, get behind me and preach this morning. Yeah. Amen. That's all God gave me was a title. A heart full of faith. Amen. A heart full of faith. So I'm going to wing it this morning. <laughs> I'm going to wing it this morning. God, I want faith. Give me faith. Amen. Give me faith. But a story that I read to you in our Bible reading from, from this, this woman with the issue of blood. The Bible, you know the story. The Bible said for 12 years she suffered. For 12 years, she suffered with this issue of blood, and she went to, to, to physicians and doctors, if you will, one after the other. She just went and went and went, and the Bible says she grew worse. Instead of getting better, she grew worse. Things were not progressing. Things were getting worse and worse every day, and the, the bad thing about it is uh, she spent all her money. Everything was gone. Her money was gone. Her hope was gone. She, her confidence in man was gone, but then the Bible says she heard about Jesus. Thank God that we can hear about Jesus this morning, that Jesus is still a miracle worker, amen, that he's still the answer. He can still touch us and help us this morning. He can still touch us and heal us. He can bring victory in our life when we give the battle to him, when we put it in the hand of the Lord, he can work it out, amen. And so thank God this morning for Jesus, she came to the Lord. She came to Jesus and I love this. The Bible said, she said within her herself if I can just touch him I shall be whole. In other words, her heart that was once discouraged, her heart that was once uh, taken over with doubt and fear that nobody can help her or nothing that man has to offer can help her. Once when she heard about Jesus, all of a sudden faith began to arise. All of a sudden her heart began to fill up with faith and she began to say within herself, if I can just get to Jesus 
and touch him, I shall be whole. I will heal. I will recover. Things will work out. I know it because Jesus is able to do it. Amen. And she said within herself, if I can just touch him, thank God for faith this morning. Let our heart be filled with faith. You said, preach, I'm running low on faith. Well, what do you do when you go low on the gas? You go to the gas station and fill it up, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, come to Jesus this morning. God, give me some yes. faith. Amen. Yes. Come to Jesus. Lord, I'm running a little bit low. Things are not the way I want it to be. Come to God. God, fill me with faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes. Pray in the Holy Ghost. He said, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We need faith this morning to trust in our God and we need our heart to be full of faith. Amen? Amen. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, it said, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And the word, as you know, keep means to guard or to, or to protect your heart. And he's talking about this place, this, the part that I'm talking about this morning, the mind. The heart, the, 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 the center of your being. He said, protect it. Keep it with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Same as saying, guard it. Because everything about your life starts in the heart. Amen? Yeah. Everything about your life starts in the heart. It starts on the inside. If our thinking is messed up, then everything we do will be messed up. Yeah. Amen? If our thinking is messed up, then everything that we do will be messed up. The Bible said in Proverbs 23, 7, he said, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. In other words, the Bible is letting us know that we have to let this heart be filled with the right things. If we be in our hearts say, you know what, I will never be able to do this, then you already know the answer. Amen. It's never going to happen. Amen. If you say in your heart, I can't serve God. I can't overcome the flesh. I can't be a Christian in this wicked and adulterous generation. Then it's never going to happen. If you say within yourself that I, my life will never change. My situation will never change. My financial situation, my relationships will never change or whatever it is. Then it will never change. Because you are programming your heart with all the wrong things. And so this morning I'm calling upon you as Christians. Let God put faith in your heart. Let your heart be filled with faith this morning that all things are possible. That I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That nothing is impossible for God. And that if God is for me then I can and I will be what God wants me to be. Amen. Amen. Thank God this morning for faith. We have to think right. This can have a both, both a positive or a negative impact on our life. We can succeed or fail depending on how we think. Amen? Amen. And we can also change a lot of things in our life when we change our thinking. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for a positive mind, right? Yes. A positive mental attitude. Right thinking in ev is not everything, we understand that, but, it, but right thinking puts us on the prop, in the proper frame of mind to where we can deal with every situation in a positive way. On many occasions we find in the Bible, before Jesus healed or helped anyone, he asked them, do you believe that this can happen? Or do you believe that I'm able to do this? And I can sense some of you are drifting already. Huh? You still here with me? This man said, he's like a cross-eyed disc thrower. He said, I don't hit the target, but I sure keep the crowd alive. <laughs> I sure keep people aware of what's happening. <laughs> but on many occasions, Jesus, before he heals somebody, he always asks them, he always call upon them to examine their heart. What's in your heart? Do you believe that I can do this? Do you believe that I'm able to, to heal you? Do you believe that I'm able to cause your eyes that was blind to see again? Faith begins on the heart, and Jesus knew that. And so you always call upon the people. He said, when the blind, before he healed the blind man, or before he healed the, the one that was crippled, or, or give hearing back to the one that was deaf, he said, do you believe that I can do this? Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And what he was doing was, he was trying to test what was in their heart. 
what was in their heart. Do you believe? I'm talking about a heart full of faith. And so it is with us this morning when we come to God and we come with a heart full of faith. We may not understand how it's all going to happen. Amen. None of us do. We don't know the ins and outs of the, the operation of the Holy Spirit. But if we believe. That's a step in the right direction. Amen. Yeah. If we have the faith knowing that God will work it out, then we are on the right track. We are in the right path for a miracle. Amen. I was telling telling him, I said, I'm, I'm sitting here waiting on a miracle. Amen. Yeah. Because I, I had prayed, we ordered a light for the bulb. It may be something small, but it's, it's big in my eyes. Amen. It may be something small. And so the, they said it's going to get here on the 27th or the 29th. And so I prayed. I said, God, I want it by Saturday. Send it to me by Saturday. And so I was just sitting there waiting. <laughs> waiting on my miracle. I already prayed. I believe. Amen. I already prayed and believed that it's going to happen. And lo and behold, it came. Amen. However it were happened, I don't care. Amen. However God had to manipulate him and cause that man to drive faster, I don't know. But it got there. Amen. It got there because I believe God. When I pray, I'm speaking of something personal. My heart is full of faith that when I pray and ask God for something, it will happen. It may not happen exactly the way I want it to happen. It may not happen at the exact time I want it to happen, but I know it will happen because my heart is connected with God in faith that God will do it. Amen? And so that's what I'm preaching about this morning. A heart full of faith. The Bible said in Hebrews 11, 6, he said, for without faith it is impossible to please God for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him the Bible tells us that the just shall live by faith and so as Christians this morning I'm preaching that our heart must be full of faith this morning don't let doubt live in your heart don't let fear enter your heart don't let discouragement come inside of your heart and destroy the faith that God put in there. Let your heart this morning be filled with faith in your God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge the Lord and let God direct your heart and your path and your ways this morning. Let your heart be filled with faith this morning. If you have faith in the Lord, who knows what the Lord will do? Amen. Who knows what God will do when he see faith deep within your heart? You see, salvation begins on the inside. Salvation begins in the heart. And this word salvation speaks of deliverance, not only from sin, but also from bad habits, from vices, things that are destroying our lives. It also from negative thinking, amen? Negative and discouraged thinking. Salvation speaks of deliverance. The Lord is my salvation. He's my deliverer. Amen. And so even when it comes to people getting saved, if you can't believe it in your heart that Jesus died for your sins on that cross and he rose again from the dead with power to set you free, you will never be saved. You will never be saved and you will die lost in your sins and you will end up in an eternity that you do not want to end up in and so you have to believe God if you want to be saved you have to simply as I preach Sunday morning as he said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved he said for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness yeah. amen and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and so if you want to be saved you there are people that listen to to our messages online if you want to be saved you got to have a heart to, to believe the lord amen if you if you if you keep questioning god and trying to figure god out and trying to find fault with god or or reason things out it's never going to happen but if you get to the simplicity of having that heart full of faith saying lord i just believe that jesus died and rose again from the dead to set me free. God will save you. You confess your sins to him. And ask him to forgive you. The Lord will save you. The Lord will set you free. Because you got to have a heart to believe the Lord. Amen? Amen. Without a heart of faith. Nothing can really happen in our life. And you know America. I was thinking about this morning. In the world. The world that we live in is built upon faith. It's not hard. Some people say, I don't have faith to believe. But everything about our life is faith. Amen? Amen. How many of you went to sleep last night saying, when I get up in tomorrow, I will do such and such? Mm -hmm. Isn't that faith? 
you didn't know whether or not you're going to get up, but you planned the day knowing that something's going to happen. That's faith. Amen. Yeah. How many of you got in your car and turned that key? Expect it to start. That's faith, right? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> How many of you take your clothes to the cleaners and expect them to clean it? Yeah. That's faith, isn't it? We all, our whole society is built upon faith. Everything about us is built upon faith. How many of you go to work and expect to get a paycheck? That's faith, isn't it? It's faith. Our whole society is built. Everything about us is built upon faith. But when it comes to God, why do we doubt Him? <laughs> why do we question Him? I'm talking about a heart full of faith. Let's have that kind of faith this morning, our God and our Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that God will work on our behalf. This story with the woman... She had a need. She had a need. Jesus, Jesus uh, was, was getting ready to go to do a greater miracle than hers. He was getting ready to raise this young girl who was, who was well, she died in the process of Jesus, before Jesus even got there. She was sick, and her father came to her, came to Jesus, and he said in verse 18, he said, While he spake these things unto them, well, I should have read more of it, but Jairus, the story of Jairus, he came to Jesus and said, my, my daughter is sick. She's almost dying. Can you come and heal her? And the Bible said while Jesus was getting ready to, to go to, to, to his house to raise or to heal the girl, news came, news came that the girl, the young girl died. She passed away. And the Bible said as soon as Jesus heard that, he told the man, he said, do not fear, only believe. Amen. Do not fear, only believe. Jesus already knew the girl was dead. Amen. He already knew she died, but he knew what he's going to do. And he knew this father can just have faith in him. If he knew if he can get this man to quit thinking negative, quit starting to cry that my daughter passed away, or quit, quit, quit believing the report that he just got and just have some faith in God that God can change it, he knew that something great can happen. And so he told the man, he said, don't worry, don't, 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 don't listen to that, just believe God, just believe God. In other words, he's showing there's a lot of times we see all these negative things happening, but God is saying, just believe me, amen, yeah. just trust me, have some faith in me, let your heart be filled with faith, don't let doubt and fear come into your heart, let it be filled with faith, and I can do something good for you, I can t ch change things around. How many times we pray... In faith, but then we allow doubt to come in. Amen? How many times we pray, believe in God, instead of sitting there waiting for your miracle, you allow the devil to come and have a doubt party in your mind. Amen? We have to believe God this morning. To see, a solution starts in our heart. The woman said, if I can just touch him, I believe already. She said, she said within herself, if I can touch him, I shall be whole. If I can touch, it already start in her heart, to start on the inside. If I can just get to Jesus and touch him, I will be healed. Amen. And so we see the solution starts on the inside. It starts in the heart. Many times we can't find a solution to our problem because we don't think it's possible. But solution begins to take form as we speak the right words. It will work out. My life will change. God will help me fix this. Amen? And those are words that come from the heart. As the Bible said, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word which we preach, even the word of faith. And so he's letting us know when our heart is full of faith, then our mouth will speak it. Amen? Amen. When our mouth will speak it, as Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. So how do I know what my heart is full of, preacher? What comes out of your mouth? Right. Eh? Does, does doubt comes out or negative things comes out? Then that's what's in the heart. Eh? That's what's in the heart. So that's a telltale right there of what our heart is full of. And so this, and that's the reason why he even said, he said, if you believe in your heart, then your mouth will speak, right? He said, with the heart we believe unto righteousness, and with the tongue confession is made unto salvation. The two are connected. Amen? Yeah. The heart and the tongue is connected. So what I'm trying, what, what, what's the message this morning? Listen to what this woman said. She said, if I can touch him. She said within herself, if I can touch him, I shall be whole. Amen? Yeah. If I can touch him, I shall be whole. So her heart was already filled with faith. Yeah. 
Her heart was already filled with faith. Now she began to speak it. Amen. She said, if I can touch him, she said within herself, if I can touch him, I shall be whole. And so I'm talking about the Bible said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. If we fill our heart with the right things, such as faith and confidence in God, when a situation arises, instead of panic or worrying coming out of our mouth, faith and solution will come out. Amen. The just shall live by their faith with Without faith, we are spiritually dead. Amen. We need faith in God. We need to have a heart that is filled with faith. So this morning, what, what are you trying to preach to us, preacher? Leave this house. Leave this church with your heart filled with faith. Amen. Amen. Don't leave the place doubting God, questioning God, trying to reason things out in your whole heart. Just leave this place knowing that God is for you. Leave this place this morning knowing that God will fight for you. Leave this house knowing that God will help you in your situation. Perfect peace, the Bible said, have they whose mind is stayed on God. If the words that come out of your mouth favors fear, or worrying, or anger, or jealousy, or bitterness, or discouragement, and all the other things that goes on, that is telling you what's in your heart this morning. Amen? But if you leave this place, this house of the Lord, and you say from this point on, man, you know what? God's going to work this out. Amen? God's going to help me. Yes, my situation is big, but I'm not dead. Amen? If God can bring the dead back to life, can he not help us? Amen. If you can heal this woman that had an issue for 12, you come to instrument. The woman that had an issue for 12 long years and she had tried everything and nothing worked. But if you heal her, can he not heal me too? Amen. If you can open the eyes of one who had never seen before, can he not help me also? If Jesus had caused a man who was paralyzed, laying on his bed that couldn't even move, can he not help me also? If he can raise a Lazarus, who was dead for four days, and the Bible said at that time he was already starting the process of decaying. Can he not do it for me also? Amen. It starts with a heart full of faith this morning. If Jesus can cause people who were hunched over for 18 years by one touch, he straightened out. Can he not do it for me also? Amen. If Jesus can do all these mighty miracles, even in this very day, if he can heal cancer and he can heal people that had aneurysm and all these things, can he not do it for me also? It starts in the heart. I got to have that heart of faith to believe God this morning. So that's the message I'm bringing to you. It has to start on the inside. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And so if you want to speak the right words of faith, then you got to fill it. You got to fill your heart with faith this morning. Amen. You have to pray and say, Lord Jesus, I don't care what's in there. Take it out and fill me with faith. Amen. I'm coming to the, the refilling station. I'm coming to the fuel station for God to open up my heart. However he does it, put that nozzle in there and pull that thing back and set it and let it just go off when it's full. Amen. Don't shortchange yourself this morning. You're in the house of God. You're in the place where the word of God is preached and the Bible said faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so this morning let God fill you up to the overflowing with faith. Let God fill you with faith. Let your heart be filled with faith this morning so that God can work in your life. Amen. Does it make sense? Yes. Amen. Yes. That that's what we need. What comes out of your mouth is a testimony of what's in your heart. Amen. What comes out of your mouth is a testimony of what's in your heart. And so this morning, this is a telltale. What kind of words do you speak? The woman, she said within herself, she was speaking the right words. She said within herself, if I can touch him, I shall be whole. Amen. If I can touch Jesus, everything's going to be all right. And this morning, as you bow your hands and close your eyes in reference to the Lord, let God fill you with faith this morning. Let God give you a heart that is full of faith that you will trust God, you will believe God, you will know that God will work things out in your life. If you don't have that faith in God, pray, God, give me faith. He said, ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. 
whatever it is, that's, that's all. Let's all find a place to pray. She began to play and sing this morning. Jesus said, when you pray, he said, believe. When you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. He said, if you believe, you will receive the things that you're praying for. When you pray, believe, and you will receive that which you are asking God for. And so this morning, as we all find a place to pray, you begin to pray and sing. Let God fill you this morning with faith. Let God put faith in your heart that you can trust in the unlimited power of Almighty God. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. We just need the faith to believe the Lord this morning. That's all.
Because Jesus, he never fails. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't know, you want me to this morning to keep trusting and believing in my God to know that God is with us. And with God, nothing shall be impossible. Bless you. We'll close the service in prayer. Thank you all for being here and allowing me to preach to you the word of the Lord. And we have service tonight at 6 30. We'll be here by the grace of God. Amen. Yes. We'll be here yes. worshiping God. So come on out and join us. 6 30 tonight. God bless you. And thank you all for joining us online. We appreciate it. Trust you receive a blessing from the Lord also. Would you please close us? Father, we thank you, Lord, for the possibility of a faith filled life you've made salvation easy for us, God. You have given us your Son, Jesus Christ, as our Savior, to give us strength each and every day. Your mercy and your grace is with us. We appreciate it. We thank you, Lord, for these things. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen.